I'm a 20 year old male and I run a large haunted house attraction. You pay to walk through and we scare the lights out of you. We hold casting sessions about three weeks before the haunting season starts and we always have interesting people show up. I develop a close connection with some of the actors throughout the season. A lot of haunters will tell you that this will develop a bond between people in some weird way. There was one kid that stood out to me during last year's audition. In fact, he impressed me so much that I allowed him to pick what scene he wanted to work. We never do that. We usually select the scenes that we want the actors to work. He ended up going with the butcher shop, and his performance was perfect. He scared the daylights out of the test group. We talked for about three hours after the test runs, and I'll never forget what he told me before leaving the makeup room. I'm just glad I found a job that allows me to act like I want to every day, minus the murder charges. We laughed about it, and I told him that I would be calling him soon. About four days later, I got his application out of the stack, and I was excited to call him and officially hire him. However, an old man answered the phone when I called. He went quiet when I asked him if the guy was home. After a short while, the old man asked me what I wanted with him. After I explained, the old man told me that the guy was no longer available. And naturally, I was very disappointed. Because I knew this guy would have been great for the haunted house. Fast forward to December. I was randomly browsing the internet. When I came across a news article on Yahoo's front page. It said, Chilling 911 call finally released. There was a picture of someone who looked like the guy who had auditioned that year. After reading the article, I confirmed that it was the same guy. He had been arrested for shooting his mother and sister in the head. And I felt something that I had never felt before. I can't even explain it. Before clicking on the 911 call, I was expecting it to be a frantic neighbor, or maybe a family member. But no. It was him. He calmly spent 24 minutes explaining to the operator what he had done completely emotionless, saying things like, I guess I'm pretty evil, whatever. Listening to the call sent a chill up my spine. All I can say is you have to hear it for yourself. What if he had ended up working at my haunted house? Would he still have done it? Would he have killed somebody at the attraction? I think about this a lot more than I should, and I can't stand that. Okay, do you, um, is there any reason that you were so angry at your mother and your sister? Uh, I don't know, I, uh, I wasn't, it's weird, I wasn't even really angry with them, it just kind of happened, I've been kind of, uh, planning on, uh, killing for a while now. The, the two of them, or just anybody? Virgin ghosts are said to be found in older, abandoned buildings and in isolated parts of the forest. They have long, dark hair covering their faces, dressed in all-white gowns with no shoes and just a pair of perfectly white, clean socks. The virgin ghosts have also been called Chonoguishin. When encountering one of these entities, it's been said that there will be a drastic change in temperature in the room giving the potential victim fair warning to leave the area immediately. One urban legend tells of a man who was searching through a building when, suddenly, the room became freezing cold. The man kept on his pursuit until he heard a voice. Not just any voice, but the voice of a virgin ghost. The being then instructed him to close his eyes and count to a hundred. The man did as he was told until he reached the number 49 when the urge to open his eyes overcame him and he looked directly at the ghost. That was the last thing the man would ever see. Here is a bit of backstory on where this urban legend came from. Though there are some debates on the true origins, most point to old Korean culture as the culprit of this story. See, back in those days, for a woman to die as a virgin meant she died without a partner and did not produce any offspring. 
So parents came up with a way to ensure their children would grow up and have families by creating this elaborate legend. Children grew up hearing that if they did not lose their virginity by the time they died, they may too become a virgin ghost, forever haunting the living. It's very peculiar when you think about it. In our society, it isn't typical for parents to encourage their daughters to lose their virginity. There is a popular urban legend that has been passed down through multiple generations about a girl and sesame seeds. The story starts with a young girl, like many people her age, was suffering from low self-esteem issues, especially about her skin. She wanted to keep it looking young and beautiful for as long as she could. She would try anything to keep her skin flawless, and that was her exact downfall. One day while at school, a friend of hers informed her about a new organic skin treatment. The girl told her the way to achieve immaculate skin was with two simple steps. First, the girl had to obtain sesame seeds and place an abundance of them inside a bathtub. The second and last step had the young woman sitting and soaking in the bathwater for hours and hours. The girl did exactly what her friend had told her to do, but she didn't get the result she had hoped for. Hours upon hours passed, and the girl still hadn't come out of the bathroom. So much time passed that even her parents began to take notice. Her mother even went to the trouble of knocking on the door and asking if she was okay. But the only response she received was, Wait a minute, wait a minute. This went on for a few more hours until the parents could no longer wait and kicked down the door. What they saw was so chilling, it was almost indescribable. There she was, their daughter sitting naked and wet in the corner of the bathroom, covered in black dots. She had a crazed look in her eyes, and as the parents examined her more, they could see that the sesame seeds had somehow sunk into her paws. This sent the girl into a frenzy, as she began stabbing herself with a toothpick over and over again trying to remove each and every sesame seed from a once beautiful skin. I used to live with my dad in Georgia, in a somewhat isolated area. My dad owned five acres of land, and a bunch of our relatives lived on the same property. There was a long driveway that branched off into separate mud and gravel driveways. Normally during the weeknights, I would finish my homework, and then decide if I wanted to listen to my stereo, or watch some paranormal shows. On the night in question, I would say it was around 9pm. I was getting settled down for the night, when suddenly, out of nowhere, there came a tap on my bedroom window. My bedroom was on the second floor, and there were no trees near my window for someone to climb up. Most of my family were away at the time, so right away, I was a bit freaked out. There was a large TV stand in front of the window which obscured my view. I went downstairs and searched through the kitchen and the living room to see if anyone was outside. My dad usually worked late nights, so I was unfortunately home alone at the time. I thought maybe my dad had forgotten his house keys, and I started walking towards the front door to check if he was there. I couldn't see his car in the driveway, since he usually parks by the front door window. Directly behind the living room is a sliding glass door with long blinds. The light on the back porch was on, and I could see a silhouette of someone standing on my back porch. Panic took over. I knew that it wasn't my father, and I didn't know if the door was locked. If I just stood there, I would give the intruder the chance to enter the house, so I bolted to the door to make sure it was locked. I stuck my hands through the blinds, too afraid to look outside. Thankfully, it was locked. I then ran to the kitchen and grabbed a huge knife to protect myself, and then went back upstairs into my bedroom. Right as I turned my light off, there came a loud bang outside my window. I hid in my closet and called my dad to let him know what was going on. He confirmed that no one should be at the house and said that he was heading over right away before he hung up. I called the cops, and the dispatch informed me that the nearest unit 
was about 25 minutes away, I waited in the closet with a knife ready to strike at whoever entered my room. The banging noises continued, and they sounded as if they were coming from every direction, almost as if there was more than one lunatic outside trying to get in. My dad and the police got there at the same time, but by then, the assailants were gone. The officers conducted a quick search of the property before taking my statement. My dad told me afterward that they saw multiple sets of footprints in the mud going all the way around the house. I'm not sure what was scarier, seeing the figure on the back porch or knowing that there was multiple people there. Nothing ever came of it, and to this day, I still have no clue why they were there.